Time's running out, Joshua. Ahoy there, mateys. I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oil Reports. Well, me hearties, as you can see from the world logo, we're returning to the Caribbean. If you haven't been following my channel lately, I've previously blogged the fifth and first Pirates of the Caribbean movies, which are loosely based on the rip roaring and epic Disneyland ride of the same name which is also one of my top 15 attractions, even though there were a few things that terrified me when I was little, like the waterfalls and this creepy looking pirate on a cannon. By the way, with California Splash Mountain currently shut down to be rethemed to Tiana's Bayou Adventure, it seems that a lot of people will be going to both Pirates and Grizzly River Run to get a good soak this summer. Anyway, after I blogged the first Pirates movie last year, I made a promise that I would share my full thoughts on the remaining three movies. So, why don't we start with the second movie? Released on July 7th, 2006, the movie is Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man's Chest. Now, Let's set sail in, mateys. Having successfully reclaimed the Black Pearl, Jack Sparrow is faced with another dilemma. He learns that the fiendish pirate Davy Jones is hunting him down because Jack has a debt to pay with Jones for his soul. Meanwhile, as Will Turner and Elizabeth Swan are about to be married, ruthless government official Lord Cutler Beckett arrests them in light of their prior involvement with Jack Sparrow. But Beckett is seeking a mysterious chest for his own nefarious intentions, and he sends Will Turner to retrieve Jack in exchange for Elizabeth's freedom. Working together again, Jack and Will must uncover the secret behind the dead man's chest and avoid Joan's wrath at any cost. So... What do I personally think of this movie? Well, while it doesn't technically top the first Pirates movie in my opinion, I still found it to be pretty thrilling and enjoyable. So, let's move on to Mustang Notes. Following the success of Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl, the cast and crew signed on for two more sequels to be shot back to back. Writer Ted Elliott and Terry Rosio decided not to make the sequels new adventures featuring the same characters as with the Indiana Jones and James Bond films, but to retroactively turn The Curse of the Black Pearl into the first of a trilogy. They wanted to explore the reality of what would happen after Will Turner and Elizabeth Swann's embrace at the end of the first movie, and initially considered the Fountain of Youth as the plot device. They settled on introducing Davy Jones, the Flying Dutchman, and the Kraken. They also introduced the historical East India Trading Company, who, for them, represented a counterpoint to the themes of personal freedom represented by pirates. Planning began in June 2004, and production was much larger than The Curse of the Black Pearl, which was only shot on location in St. Vincent. This time, the sequels would require fully working ships with a working Black Pearl built over the body of an oil tanker in the Bayou La Brert in Alabama. By November, the script was still unfinished as the writers did not want director Gore Verbinski and producer Jerry Bruckheimer 
to compromise what they had written. So, Verbinski worked with James Byerkit to storyboard major sequences without the need of a script. While Elliot and Rosio wrote a preparatory script for the crew to use before they finished the script that they were happy with. By January 2005, with rising costs and no script, Disney executives threatened to cancel the movie, but thankfully they changed their minds. The writers would accompany the crew on location, feeling that the lateness of their rewrites would improve the spontaneity of the cast performances. Filming took place from February to September 2005 in Palos Verdes, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Dominica, and the Bahamas, as well as on sets constructed at Walt Disney Studios. And like with the first movie, the visual effects were done by George Lucas's studio, Industrial Light and Magic. Also to mention, the film won Best Visual Effects at the 79th Academy Awards. Now, firstly, this was the very first Disney film to use this opening logo. And when I saw this movie in theaters, I thought it was pretty fitting for the movie since it is based on a Disneyland ride. And it wouldn't be until November 2022, starting with Strange World, when the 100 Years logo started appearing in their films. Anyway, in my opinion, like the first film, the story is equally as thought-provoking due to its centering on an evil man who collects the souls of the dead to serve aboard his ship for 100 years, as well as Jack Sparrow's connection and debt to him. Also, I like that we see a few familiar locations like Port Royal and Tortuga, but we also get some new locations like the Isla de Pelagostos, which is a remote island where a tribe of cannibals known as the Pelagostos live. And it was briefly mentioned in the first movie while Jack was talking to Mulroy and Murtaugh. Tia Dalma's shack which is located by the mouth of the Pantano River in Cuba, and Isla Cruces, which is a plagued island ever since the Church of England came, bringing salvation, disease, and death. And it's mainly known to be the location of the fabled Dead Man's Chest, which contains the heart of Davy Jones. Also, I've noticed a few Easter eggs from the original Disneyland ride featured throughout the movie, and after the film was released, it influenced some new additions, like the inclusion of Jack Sparrow, Barbosa, and Davy Jones. Plus, this film includes several memorable swashbuckling action scenes and a lot of hilarious stunts, like when they involve bone cages and a large wooden water wheel, and the sea battle between the Black Pearl and the Flying Dutchman, is very epic and thrilling. Also, I think the Kraken in this movie is a really notorious monster that preys upon ships to ensure that Davy Jones has many unwilling candidates for service aboard his cursed vessel. And while we don't see its whole body in one shot, it's described as a gigantic cephalopod creature with a squid-like mantle and a number of long tentacles at the base of its head. It also has a long, sharp tail, similar to a squid, and large, round eyes with orange isises and black pupils. Also, I heard that animation director Hal Hickel instructed the crew to watch King Kong vs. Godzilla for inspiration. Due to the film having a real octopus crawling all over the miniatures. Plus, this beast made it as one of my top 13 scariest monsters in a live action film. And I thought the part where it drags Jack Sparrow and the Black Pearl into Davy Jones' locker really broke my heart. Plus, the part where the Kraken roars and spits at Jack was really disgusting. By the way, I like to point out that that spit was not CGI. It was real guns being thrown at Johnny Depp. Also to mention, 
While the Kraken is dead during the events of the third movie, I find it to be pretty awesome that Sora gets to fight it during the Battle of the Maelstrom, courtesy of Organization 13's Lutzard. Speaking of which, while this movie doesn't technically appear in the Kingdom Hearts games, I have a theory that the events of this movie might have been happening while Sora and Riku were taking their Mark of Mastery exam in the Realm of Sleep. And now, let's move on to the film's cast. Our main protagonist, Captain Jack Sparrow, is once again played by Johnny Depp, best known from the original Nightmare on Elm Street, Finding Neverland, the Fantastic Beasts films, several Tim Burton movies, Sherlock Gnomes, and Into the Woods. Now, I still stand by that Jack Sparrow is a really awesome pirate, and he makes an irrelevant trickster. Plus, Johnny Depp still does great at giving him a humorous and eccentric personality. During this film, a year after getting the Black Pearl back, Jack learns that he's being hunted down by the Kraken, and he received the black spot on his palm because of his unpaid blood debt to Davy Jones, which was made 13 years prior, despite the fact that Jack has technically been captain for two years due to him being mutinied by Barbosa. He is also searching for the dead man's chest to free himself from Jones' servitude. Also, I find it really funny that Jack gets a lot of silly moments in this movie, like when he's being chased by the Pelagostos, or when he makes fun of Jones with his jar of dirt. Plus, I thought the moment where Jack shoots a net full of explosives to wound the Kraken's tentacles was really badass. Next is Will Turner, again played by Orlando Bloom, best known from Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings slash Hobbit trilogies, Troy and Elizabeth Town. In this film, during their attempted wedding, both Will and Elizabeth are arrested by Lord Cutler Beckett of the East India Trading Company for helping Jack Sparrow escape his death sentence. Later, Will Turner sets out to retrieve Jack's unique compass in exchange for their freedom. After reuniting and escaping with Jack on the Pelagostos Island and visiting the voodoo mystic Tiadalma, Will Turner is tricked into serving on board Davy Jones' ship where Will met up with his father, Bootstrap Bill. In my opinion, Will is still very courageous, and he's willing to do anything to prevent him and his fiance from getting hung and free his father from Jones' servitude. Plus, I still think his sword fighting skills are absolutely excellent. Next is his fiance, Elizabeth Swan, played by Kira Knightley, whom was in Star Wars Episode One, King Arthur, Pride and Prejudice, Princess of Thieves, and The Nutcracker in the Four Realms. In my eyes, Elizabeth is a spirited and adventurous woman. Sometime after Will left Port Royal to retrieve Jack's compass, Elizabeth escapes jail with help from her father and retrieved letters of Marquis intended for Jack before stowing away aboard the Edinburgh Trader. After meeting with Sparrow in Tortuga, Elizabeth agreed to help find the dead man's chest in order to save her fiance, who was tricked into serving on board the Flying Dutchman. By the end, Elizabeth took part in a battle which led to her delivering Jack Sparrow to the Kraken in order to save Will and the rest of Jack's crew. Next we come to the new villain, Davy Jones, played by Bill Nighy, whom was in Harry Potter 7 Part 1, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, Astro Boy, Jerry Bruckheimer's G-Force, Ardman's Arthur Christmas, Rango, and Pokemon Detective Pikachu. Davy Jones is the captain of the ghost ship known as the Flying Dutchman. A long time ago, Jones was once a human being who was unable to bear the pain of losing his true love. He carved out his heart and put it into the dead man's chest. 
over the years, he has become a bizarre and nightmarish creature, part octopus, part crab, part man, as well as ruler of the ocean depths who collects the souls of the dead or dying sailors to serve aboard his ship for 100 years. Also, at one point, Davy Jones made a bargain with Jack Sparrow to resurrect the Black Pearl, where he'd be captain for 13 years in return for 100 years of servitude aboard the Dutchman. Later in the film, after Will gets captured, Jones confronts Jack and he gives him three days to collect the remaining 99 souls. To me, Davy Jones has got to be one of the greatest live-action Disney villains ever, and I really love Bill Nye's performance, especially with how he talks. Also, while Jones has an evil and ruthless nature, his character has appeared to be deeply influenced by situations involving love and passion. And I think the way he plays his giant pipe organ makes him very similar to Captain Nemo in order to serve as a reminder of the humanity he once had. Plus, I think Jones can be very scary and quick-tempered in order to show that he means business. Another antagonist in this movie is Lord Cutler Beckett, played by Tom Hollander, whom was in Mowgli, Legend of the Jungle, and Bohemian Rhapsody. Beckett is the chairman of the East India Trading Company who travels to Port Royal to capture and recruit Jack Sparrow as a privateer. While he did send Will to retrieve Jack's compass, what he really desires is Davy Jones' heart, with which he can rule the seas with Jones' commanded servitude. To me, Beckett is best described as a cruel, unsympathetic, and ruthless fiend, preparing to murder masses of people in his ruthless attempt to completely eliminate piracy, including children. He's also rather arrogant, always coming off as coldly condescending and very confident that nothing could ever stand in his way. Plus, he's also manipulative and smooth-talking and will use any means necessary to get what he wants. Next up is Jack's first mate, Joshimi Gibbs, played by Kevin McNally, who played Joseph Bouquet in the 2004 Femme of the Opera movie. Now, Gibbs is still one of my favorite characters in this franchise due to him being a generally knowledgeable person who often provides the movie's cast, as well as the audience, with background information. During this movie, Gibbs accompanies Jack on his quest to find the dead man's chest containing the heart of Davy Jones, after Jack learns that Jones intends to collect a blood debt that Jack owes him. My favorite scene involving Gibbs is when he tells Will about the Kraken, which to me is a really chilling moment. Next we have Pintel and Rigetti, played by Lee Ehrenberg and Mackenzie Crook. In the first film, these guys used to serve Barbosa aboard the Black Pearl, but after his death and their curse was lifted, they got locked up in jail. During this movie, after escaping from prison, Pintel and Rigetti came under the employment of Jack Sparrow, whom they developed a sincere loyalty to over time, despite their past aggressions. In my eyes, these two are still bumbling, incompetent sidekicks. However, between the two, I think Rigetti sticks out the most due to him reading the Bible, and I thought their silliest moment was when they try to steal the dead man's chest while Jack, Will, and Norrington are fighting. Speaking of which, our next character is James Norrington, played by Jack Davenport. Norrington used to be Commodore of Port Royal's Royal Navy until he resigned his commission after losing his ship and crew in a hurricane off the coast of Tripoli in the pursuit of Jack Sparrow and his crew. Fallen on hard times, 
Norrington joins the Black Pearl's crew, and he seeks to regain his honor and career. And he does so by stealing Davy Jones' heart, bringing it back to Port Royal, and relinquishing it to Lord Beckett. Moving on, we have Bootstrap Bill Turner, played by Stellan Skarsgård, whom was Eric Selvig in the MCU, Bill Anderson in the Mamma Mia movies, the Grand Duke in the 2015 Cinderella movie, and he was in a few other films like The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo and Dune, which will be getting a sequel this coming November. Now, Bootstrap was one of many undead pirates on Barbosa's crew, whom were cursed by the Aztec gold on the Isla de Muerta, until he was tied to a cannon and thrown overboard after refusing to take part in the mutiny against Jack Sparrow. Sometime later, Bootstrap was found by Davy Jones, and he swore to servitude aboard the Flying Dutchman crew and escaped death. To me, Bootstrap has got to be one of the most interesting characters in this film. The first time we see him, he warns Jack of his debt to Jones and brands him with the black spot. And later, he reunites with his son, Will Turner, and aids him in stealing the key from a sleeping Jones. Although at the cost of surrendering his soul to Jones for eternity during a game of Liar's Dice. However, my one nitpick involving Bootstrap is that even though he is mentioned in Kingdom Hearts 2, he's sadly absent in Kingdom Hearts 3. Finally, we come to Tia Dama, played by Naomi Harris, whom I remember for being in the latest Venom sequel. Tia Dama is a witch doctor who resides deep within the bayou swamps of Cuba in a sprawling wooden shack perched in a treetop by the mouth of the Pantano River, which to me feels like a reference to the Blue Bayou Lagoon and Beacon Joe's old shack from the original Disneyland ride. To me, Tia Dalma is another memorable character, and she's very mysterious due to her having uncanny voodoo powers to foretell the future, summon up demons, and to look deep into men's souls. She's also able to see into people's hearts and mind and know of their destiny. But trust me, there's more to her than meets the eye. Anyway, during this movie, in exchange for the undead monkey Jack, Tia Dalma tells Jack Sparrow and his crew about Davy Jones, and she answers Will Turner's question about Jones's chest and its key. Also, upon discovering that Jack has the black spot, Tia Dalma gives him a jar of dirt so that he would always carry land with him where he'd be safe from Jones. And she uses her crab claws to give the crew a clue as to where the Flying Dutchman might be. Other actors in the film include Jonathan Price as Elizabeth's father, Governor Weatherby Swan, David Bailey as Cotton, Martin Cabla as Marty, David Schofield as Beckett's second-in-command Mercer, and Alex Norton as Captain Bellamy of the Edinburgh Traitor. And now, on to my final words. Overall, Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man's Chest is a pretty thrilling movie. While it doesn't technically top the first film, I find it to have a very epic and thought-provoking story the visual effects are outstanding, and the musical score by Hans Zimmer is classical. Plus, the main characters, Jack Sparrow, Elizabeth Swan, and Will Turner, are as memorable as they were before. The side characters like Gibbs, Pintel, and Rigetti are underrated, and the new villain, Davy Jones, would have to be the best part about this entire movie. Also, this film includes clever Easter eggs and references from the original Disneyland ride. It has daring and badass fight scenes, hilarious chase scenes, over-the-top stunts, and an intense battle with one of the scariest sea monsters ever. I give this movie an 86% out of 100. Well, that's all for now. 
Join me for my next blog where I look at the third Pirates movie. To be continued.